If it matters to you, it matters to him. The voice of Southern Oregon, Bill Meyer on FM 1067, KMED and 99.3 KCMD. If you've looked around Southern Oregon, uh, no doubt you have uh, noticed a, well, a burgeoning hemp industry. A lot of people may be switching from uh, selling uh, cannabis to actually going with industrial hemp. It is indeed a thing, but it's not where you just throw some seeds in the ground and hope for the best and just put up some signs that say, this is not marijuana. Don't steal it. <laughs> I mean, isn't that kind of what, uh, what we're looking at this morning? Uh, fortunately, there are there are some classes coming up on this. Uh, Sophia Blanton joins me. And uh, and we also have uh, the founder, Bruce Perlowin. Bruce, how are you doing this morning? Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm doing great. Okay. So the name of your website is thehempuniversity.com. Is that right, Sophia? That's right. Okay. And, uh, Sophia, are you you're Bruce's assistant then? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. So break it down for us both. I don't know who wants to go first on this one. Um, what classes are you offering here in Southern Oregon? What is the, and what is the whole story? And why should we, well, how would we, well, okay, why should we care about hemp? Why should we care? We'll start with that. Why don't we just do that? Okay? Well, you know, there's no question that the industrial hemp wave is here. And we believe that by promoting educational projects such as Hemp University, we can help empower people with the knowledge and the tools and the support that they need to build a thriving industrial hemp economy. And um, Bruce can speak to this, too, because the first hemp university happened in um, North Carolina in 2017, and it was a big success. Okay. So, Bruce, uh, tell us about your experience here about uh, about Hemp Inc., okay? Well, Hemp Inc. is a publicly traded company, but the Hemp University, which we're talking about now, is an absolutely critical component of uh, hemp Inc. because it's the educational division. And I've gone through five years of people planting hemp, and I call what they do million dollar mistakes. I, as an example, <laughs> one, that was kind of like I was talking about hey, just throw some seeds in the ground and hope for the best, put right. up the signs, right? Yeah, let's take a couple of examples, real life examples. One farmer who's on the hemp commission in North Carolina, they had to have a farmer on the hemp commission for the state. He planted 40 acres of hemp, and he planted the hemp seeds four inches deep. Not one hemp seed came up because yes. you can plant them a quarter inch deep, not four inch deep. So that was a very expensive mistake. He was going to water his clones with 9 pH water. That would have killed the clones. When he picked up his clones, he put them in a refrigerator truck and froze the first 10 feet of the truck. <laughs> clones killed them all. And that's the beginning. It goes on and on and on and on of all these mistakes people made in the learning curve of this brand new crop, which we haven't grown in America for 70 or 80 years. Now, why, now why is hemp, and maybe I'll direct this uh, question to you, Sophia, why is hemp important in, in, as far as the industrial uses of it? Because I know that uh, you know, 70, 80 years ago was pretty much phased out of existence here in the United States. Yeah, certainly. And it was uh, it was quite an artificial prohibition as well. And we're we're at the end of that prohibition era now. I mean, um, hemp's uses are applicable to so many different things. I mean, we can we can replace plastics with with hemp. You already know about hemp fiber um, with paper and cloth. It, it has uses. Um, you, we, we can make fuels out of hemp. It has nutritional uses. And then not to mention um CBD and the cannabinoids, um, that's, that's also part of the, um, of the industrial hemp wave. So its, it's uses are so much more plentiful. Hmm. Okay. And it is, I just want to make sure that, uh, Bruce, we understand this is all perfectly legal now. It doesn't fall into the same problems as, let's say, uh, growing cannabis or moving cannabis across state lines. Is that true? Yes. Yes and no. The 2018 Farm Bill made industrial hemp legal across the board federally. Mm -hmm. However, the states still have to legalize it. 41 states have legalized it. And then after they legalize it, they have to put the rules and rules and terms and conditions in place. What do you got to pay for a license? How many acres you can grow? You, you know, a lot of different rules. So even though it is legally federally and you can ship hemp, according to the federal government, from one legal state to the other state, um, whether that's biomass or whether that's buds, and it's illegal for the states in between to interdict it. Um, 
we still have a, a little bit of way to go before it's accepted, the legality of it, it's accepted across the board. But it is 100 percent federally legal as we speak. And I want to be clear that uh, hemp, as contrasted with cannabis, even though it practically looks the same in many cases, and uh, of course some critics would say it smells the same too, for that matter, but it doesn't have the THC content, the part of the plant that would make you high in marijuana, right? Correct. It only has to be to be classified as hemp. You have to be below 03 percent THC and THCA, and that will not get anybody high. Okay. Um, the CBD count is what makes you relax. It makes you keal. It makes you go to sleep. And, and there's just literally hundreds of claims. I'm not making any claims. They are not necessarily medical claims. Sure. But anecdotal claims on what it does do for you. And that's part of the education that we're trying to get out there, too. All right. So this class is going to be March 23rd. Yes. This is a full day um, intensive seminar on industrial hemp. Um, it's going to be a very productive Saturday. We've got eight 45 minute classes that are going to cover topics like the science of regenerative farming and biomes um, to cooperative farming human resource compliance, legalities, those types of topics. And then on the economic side, we've got speakers about hemp futures and extraction contracts that are going to help farmers see an end game for their product so that they can take it all the way to sales and profits. And I'm kind of curious, Bruce, are people going into hemp too because uh, the cannabis world seems to have been somewhat saturated in Oregon? Is that also driving part of this or is there something more to this mission? No, it, 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 you got it right, but not the whole story. Okay. It's saturated. Medical marijuana, recreational marijuana got saturated in Oregon because too many people were growing it. And when you have too much supply, the de demand was still there. But the, the prices went way, way, way down mm -hmm. until you have last year and this year when the actual price of hemp buds and the hemp biomass is, in a lot of cases, more expensive than medical marijuana and that happened and uh it happened a lot in oregon it happened in southern california i'm sorry northern california and it's happening more and more because you know and, and so that's one reason it's you, you just make more money the second reason is you can just plant more you can't plant 50 acres of marijuana you can plant 500 acres of hemp and that's not right. a massive grow is it more or less or about the same expense per acre to grow hemp as it is, let's say, cannabis? Pretty much exactly the same. Pretty much the same. Okay. But uh, a lower regulatory load, would that be fair to say? Way, 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 way lower. And, um, and, and again, you can plant, you know, like, like one of our growers, because we process and harvest and cure and, and buck and, and do all the pro-plash post-processing for the hemp plant farmers, one of them grew 500 acres as his largest grow of medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, and he grew this year or last year 72,000 acres. No clue how much biomass that was going to produce. A lot of the marijuana farmers did not know how to scale up. Right. You know, they said, oh, we need a drying room, but the drying room was maybe one-tenth of what they really needed. So thank God we came along with our local processing center, and we really saved a lot of farmers' crops by being able to dry, cure, it, and, and do the post-processing for them. Okay, so this is on uh, this is farming definitely on a larger scale than your typical marijuana grow, and that's, uh, that's good to know, which is why uh, some education would be very helpful for this. So the Hemp University classes is March 3rd, 23rd. Where is that going to be happening, Sophia? That's going to be in the arena room of the Stevenson Union at Southern Oregon University. Okay. Yep. So it's it's a full day. We've got the eight master classes. We've also got facilitated networking that's going to be taking place. Um, Bruce Perlowin will also be there talking about his vision of hemp as an engine of economic revival and social change. Um, we've got lunch included, coffee break, and it's just it's going to be a pretty full on day. And we're really hoping that okay. people are going to get the most out of it. And, yeah, I imagine there's some cost to this. Uh, what does it cost? Well, the early bird ticket is $120, and you can grab it right now just by logging on to thehempuniversity.com. And there's a little button that says enroll, okay. thehempuniversity.com. Thehempuniversity.com. Yeah. You could buy tickets that day, but I would imagine it's more expensive at that point. It'll be a little bit more expensive on that day, yep. Okay, i got to ask you, are you yeah. going to be fed uh, hemp seeds? 
<laughs> I wish. I wish. That's one of those things that's kind of slow in coming around in America. Okay. All right. Do you actually see food products uh, in the future more or less made by this? I, I, you talked about the plastics replacement and, and various others. I imagine that's using the oil. Isn't that right, uh, Bruce? We're using hemp oil, you, you know, in, in oh, replace yeah, of petroleum. Yes. Yeah. And when you talk about hemp oil, there's two kinds of hemp oil. Yes, the hemp oil is replaced with the petroleum. It also is extremely healthy. You can get it in any health food store. And then you have the CBD, which is an oil, but it's an extracted concentrated oil, which concentrates the cannabinoid content of the CBD plant, which is way, way, way more healing than hemp oil. But hemp oil itself is, a, is classified as a superfood. CBD would be, I guess, the... Uh, the, the highest grade of a hemp oil. Okay, very good. Well, I'll tell you what, you can find out more at thehempuniversity.com. March 23rd is when this uh, this university is going to be conducted over at Southern Oregon University. That's right. You know, oddly enough. And 120 bucks uh, for the early bird. We appreciate you coming in. And Bruce, you being on here. And uh, it, so it was one of those things where I've known people who said, hey, well, I don't want to do marijuana right now. I'm going to be a hemp farmer. Well, we want to make sure and avoid the pitfalls on that, too. That's right, and hopefully save people some million dollar learning curves. Yeah, yeah, because uh, there is apparently a high learning curve, you know, to to get to know the the drying, the farming techniques, right. the distribution, uh, what you can do, what you can't do, what you should be doing, etc. Right. All right, find out more at thehempuniversity dot com. Sophia, Bruce, thank you for being on. You thank be you well. for having us, Bill. Hey, good luck on that, my friend. You take care. All right. Okay. Eight fifty five KMED and KCMD is where you are.